Hey folks here at OS Reviews, you're watching our video comparison and a closer look at the similarities and differences between the Ubuntu Touch OS crafted by Cynogen and Migo, which is created by Nokia. So both of these are gesture-based uh, operating systems for mobile platforms, and they're very elegant and beautiful. Uh, both allow you to multitask with ease and really jump through multiple open programs and kind of pioneered the way that our current multitasking system works on Android as well as iOS. So taking a quick look at the notification screens first, on the Ubuntu Touch we have the symbolic clock that represents your time, date, as well as the occasional notifications, and a drag down notification drawer that you can also swipe through for a divided look between things such as notifications, time and clock, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and location-based settings. On Miko, you can double tap to unlock, and we also have the same thing, a clock in addition to notifications which might pop up, but the notification drawer itself isn't accessible through the main menu, and I can swipe anywhere from any corner to completely unlock the screen. On the Ubuntu Touch, I can also swipe either from left or right from the corners to completely unlock it and get to the main screen. The icons on both of these phones are petite as well as beautiful looking. They have rounded corners and share very similar design languages. Obviously, Miko is a slightly older operating system, and on here, the default wallpaper is a clear black, which really sh shows off the contrast of the N9's AMOLED panel. But both are pretty easy to navigate through, whereas on the N9, we have a consolidated list, which is vertical, just like on Ubuntu Touch, of all of your ap applications. Ubuntu does divide into a few more pages. For instance, there's a music page and also a video page that takes uh, information as well as YouTube videos which are popular uh, online and also on other music streaming sites and puts it into these two separate tabs. Uh, but their main programs will be on this home page that you see here. Otherwise, on the Migo operating system, I can also swipe to get a screen of my previously open applications. And this is essentially the multitasking functionality. So for instance, if I'm in a phone dialer pad, and let's say I've placed a call and I'm finished with making my call, I swipe from the edge of the display to get rid of it. Same thing with on Ubuntu Touch. And on here, it's going to show up as my previously open application, which I can then tap on to go back in for easy multitasking. And it's going to keep that open in this card view. On Ubuntu Touch, to access multitasking, I swipe from the right-hand right edge of the display to see my open tabs, and then I can jump right into it or of course I can also flick it off the screen to get rid of it. So same thing on here, I would actually tap and hold to get rid of this uh, application. Otherwise, uh, on the Migo operating system, there's a third screen which is for your time, date, and weather information, and some quick notifications which you can customize, and that's it. So the Migo has a more traditional uh, UI experience in that it customizes just your apps, kind of your app drawer, your notifications, and also your multitasking as the three screens. Whereas on Ubuntu Touch, it's more like the notifications are accessed all from the shade on the very top here, and you have a main app drawer, but then you also have, uh, you know, two more additional pages for music and video. So the emphasis here, I guess, is on multimedia. A little bit strange, considering that, of course, Ubuntu doesn't really have a history with creating multimedia content. Uh, so it's interesting that they divided the pages in this way. Otherwise, if I take a quick look at the notification shades on the top, again, on the Migo operating system, it's a lot more simple and straightforward. So it's just your basic notifications, such as missed calls, SMS, emails, and also your settings for Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS. Whereas, again, you can do a bit more with Ubuntu Touch, at least version 15.0.4, which is the latest version I'm showing you guys today in this video. Otherwise, if we take a closer look at some basic utilities and how those apps are designed on both platforms, we can check out the camera apps, for instance, and on the Migo inspired N9 here, you can see that Nokia has done its work, but we have still the same design language with rounded off corners on the icons, and in addition to go through more settings to get a closer look at my resolution, my um, you know aperture as well as brightness, and on the Ubuntu Touch OS, how I access more settings is swiping up from the display to look at things such as turning on grids, HDR, flash, and essentially the same things. So this is how you access, again, more functions on both of these operating systems. And again, once I'm done, I can swipe from any corner, basically on Miko to get rid of the app. But on Ubuntu Touch, I should really swipe on the left-hand corner um, to completely get rid of the application. One other difference on Ubuntu Touch, of course, is that if I swipe from the left ever so slightly, it also brings me this kind of drawer, this desktop drawer, which you'll see on any Ubuntu desktop that you may have. Um, instead of being you know, horizontal, it's now vertical, and these can be pinned and 
customize for your most commonly used applications, such as your web browser, your uh, settings, your camera, um, your phone dialer, things like this. And there's a tiny dot to represent that the application is currently open and running in the background. So that's a little difference as well. If we take a look at the settings on both of these operating systems, stop on this one more time, so you can see that they both have a pretty typical layout on the Mego operating system. It's more of this straightforward, vertically scrolling um, UI experience similar to Android, whereas on Ubuntu Touch, it's more of a symbolic one that also gives you images to correspond and separates it into multiple tabs, just like they, how they handle the main home pages in terms of its layout and content, where you have a few things at a time in this tiny little grid, and it takes a little time to get used to, but both are very simple to use. In settings here, you can also turn on the, the uh, convergence feature, which is the main uh, feature at the time that differentiated Ubuntu Touch from other mobile OS's, which is connecting it to a monitor and transforming it into a full Ubuntu out of both of these programs by swiping out. And uh, essentially, that is most of the differences, I would say. Some other things, obviously, will be design mi minor design differences between utility apps and what you can do with them. I can Here's the Notes application on both of these phones. Ubuntu Touch has a bit more advanced settings that allows you to also sync notes from Evernote and categorize and sort them. But the main utility of typing out letters and giving you quick memos is very similar. And I'll take this opportunity to take a quick look at the QWERTY keyboards on both phones. They're both pretty easy to type on and they share some similarities as well in design. Obviously there's inverted color schemes on both of these phones, but the way that you know the font sizes are laid out, the way that you can tap on symbols, these are pretty similar and um, also easy to use. There's also predictive text on both if you do need that function. So pretty easy to use. Uh, the calendar application which allows you to add notifications, also similar in the fact that they chose orange and white and black as the color scheme that operates on both. You can really see the similarities here. Uh, interesting because, again, we know that Ubuntu Touch did have some code that was drawn from Miko. So we can see evidence of that perhaps in this area where I can add notifications and kind of look at my calendar through a monthly view on both or change it to a more uh, traditional view on the side here. So perhaps uh, if I want to look at per week, we can see this vertical view, same thing here. And of course, set new notifications if that's what I want to do. So that's just been a quick comparison and a closer look at the differences, mostly visual, between Ubuntu Touch and uh, Miko OS. Obviously there are many differences in terms of how they were designed and what types of demographics they were looking for. Miko was looking for this general user that wanted a very simple user interface, some multitasking, and it's just meant as a phone or a tablet OS that's straightforward. Uh, Ubuntu Touch is a bit more complicated in that it offers these gestures that we've come to love and expect and share attributes with Miko and WebOS, but it also has more ambition to create features like convergence, for instance, to transform it into a full desktop and there's terminal and a more complex set of apps that you can run on it. So it's a bit more advanced, but you know, in terms of how some of the basic utility apps from the clocks to the things are designed, they are quite similar. And again, the way that the gestures operate are also, you can see some similarities in the way that the thought processes operated. So anyways, it was pretty interesting to see kind of differences, mostly aesthetic in this video that we went through uh, between Ubuntu Touch here on the left and also Miko here on the right. So thanks for watching this video here at OS Reviews.